Hello guys and welcome to another server smash. Uh, we are here today again for a uh, mega series versus Cobalt. I am joined today by uh, my good friends and colleagues working with me to make this an awesome show. Uh, Redlint, when you say hello. Hey guys, this is Redlint Bastard. And my co-caster, main co-caster today, will be our very special guest coming back for her perhaps third or fourth server smash. Say hello, Luperza. Hello, Luperza. No, hi guys. <laughs> How you doing? So, today, we, this is our pre-game show. We are going to kick off in about 25 minutes with the actual battle. But um, today is our server smash. Co series Cobalt. Tomorrow is um, Miller Woodman. Uh, where are we playing today, Maggie? We are going to be playing on a Jaeger server, which is a private server where you guys can all rock and roll, no interferences, and we're going to be playing on Esamir. Uh, yes, and uh, it's our familiar map setup, so I guess we'll explain it in a, in a little bit, everything that's going on. Um, we have a straw poll, or do we have one ready? Um... Hmm. I believe I we have a link to this. Here I, we go. I will provide it to you in TeamSpeak, and you can provide it on the channel. Basically, it's no, I just uh, dropped it in chat. Ah, there you go. Wonderful, way ahead of me. So, um, today, right, match details, Red. Why don't you give us a kind of a shout out at what's going on today? Well, today is, as you guys have already mentioned, it's going to be on the continent of Esamir. We have Ceres versus Cobalt. Ceres is starting in the south of the map. They're starting as the Van of Sovereignty. And Cobalt is in the eastern or northeastern warp gate. They're starting as the new conglomerate. This is going to be 240 versus 240. Uh, we're used to this. This is what we've been doing on Esamir for, uh, for a while now. But there are no points. Uh, no point system anymore. This is just a straight territory alert. It's exactly like uh, what you would expect on live. We're going to start, and two hours later, whoever has the most territory wins. Uh, one of the, uh, the nice things about playing on Jaeger is this is a private server. These are accounts that nobody can come and mess with. We are only going to have the people who are supposed to be playing and don't have to worry about any of the problems of randoms coming on to the test server like we usually do. Uh, the resources are exactly as they are in live. So where we had some, some new uh, rules last time with the, the new resource system that hasn't gone to live yet. So they're playing with the old resource system, which you guys are used to on live, uh, with three different resource types and everything like that. They haven't yet updated Jaeger uh, to what the PTS has. Uh, and uh, also one of the, the things that we keep on upgrading here as we, as we do these streams is our overlay, is the information that we're giving to you as viewers to help your viewing experience. And I'll let Farah explain the specifics of the stuff that you're going to be seeing up on the screen. So um, as we did a fortnight ago, uh, we experimented with a system to allow us to do uh, kind of a rolling point score. So this is an accurate point score uh, showing uh, accurately, uh, he said twice, uh, the percentages of each territory on the map. Um, today, uh, we're now pulling it from the API. Uh, a little technical, but basically the test server doesn't give out information whereas the live servers do, so we can pull this information instantly. It's so fast, it's faster than the actual server map. So when a base flits, bam, we will get an instant update and a little scrolly ticker so you, the viewer, can see what's going on and what the score is on at any given second uh, to our time. And the key thing is today is we have an alert. We will have uh, an actual um, alert in game. So anyone can just press tab, you know, for the participants to take part and they can see how long it's left for the game to go. So that's usually very, very helpful for all the participants. Oh, and we have maybe stats? Do we have stats, Redland? That we we are looking at getting stats. Stats will not be live. That's not going to be something that comes up during the match. But uh, we had uh, Maelstrom26 from Dig T on Miller uh, has been uh, another person. You know, all, everything we do here is all volunteer. It, it's completely just people coming up and saying, hey, I can help you get this information. What do you want? Let's make it look cool. And he has gone through the API, which we now have access to being on Jaeger, and uh is going to be able to give us who has the most kills, uh, who is the the top killing medic, who's the top killing infiltrator. He's even told me he's going to be able to figure out what vehicle has the most kills. Is it, uh, you know, maybe you'll be able to see is the the reaver or the uh, the scythe the better uh, the better killing in this server smash. Uh, we'll be able to find out what the best uh, the mo the 
weapon with the most kills is. So will it be the Orion? I know that I'm sure that's going to send chat into a frenzy, but huh. we're, we're going to be able... We're gonna well, be able yeah, to there's, there's, there's individual info. stats, which we may or may not be interested in, and kind of outfit-pulled ones as well, kill the Threshold if we want it, but also just kind of generic stuff that's cool, like how many bullets were fired, perhaps, or how many kills there were, how many deaths in total, you know, how many uh, heavy battle tanks were pulled, all that kind of stuff as we go through. So that, that's kind of interesting, like, you know, there were 19,000 Prowlers destroyed in this any given day. That That's cool stats. And this is this is the very first time we're doing this. Uh, yeah, Maelstrom has already said that he's, oh. he's looking forward to... Sorry. No, uh, no, to, do to, go on. We're having technical difficulties. I'll get right back to that. Uh, he, he's he's looking forward to getting even more stats as as we go on and uh, making them look pretty and everything like that. I'm sure he'll be posting uh, uh, you know what he actually gets from the raw data. And of course, I'll also uh, we need the players themselves to come back later and tell us who they were because we're not going to be able to say oh uh, Farah has the most kills. It will say what account they're playing, and then we have to to tell us uh, what the um, what the actual uh, name of that person was who was playing the account. So, um, I'll let you continue, Redlin. I'm going to laze with Maelstrom here via text to figure out what's going wrong on the scoreboard. Okay. Do you, um, you want to do the interviews, or do you want to, anything else before we go out well, into the interviews? Well, uh, I was, I was going to talk about uh, our next match, because this is the first of, a, of a two, two matches in a weekend here. And um, basically, we are, we're doing this first merger smash. This is uh, to determine between Ceres and Cobalt. And then tomorrow at 18 UTC, uh, Miller versus Woodman. Now they just played only two weeks ago, and uh, some people were confused about that. That was a match that was already set up on Hassan. Uh, we're doing a very similar match. They will be on Hassan. Uh, it happens tomorrow at 18 UTC, but it's a 336 versus 336 match. It's the largest uh, match that we've ever done here, and uh, I, I'm really excited about that. I, I know that uh, that Maggie uh, certainly said she was excited oh, as well. Oh man. Super excited. I'm sad that I'm not going to be able to be here for it because I have another cast that I'm going to be part of, but that's that's one that I definitely want to watch. It's going to be one of the biggest battles that we're going to get to see that's going to be fair and even. Um, I think that, and it's going to be in Hassan, which and Hassan just provides like such a different battlefield. That's one of the great things about Hassan is unlike, say, with Ezemir, where you only have five starting lanes. There's only five, five fights you can really get to at the beginning. Uh, with Hassan, there's seven or eight. And those lanes split off even more. So I really believe, even though 336 is is more than we've ever done before, I believe that it's going to feel like smaller fights. There's just so much space for you to spread out to, and you can't you can't group three platoons somewhere and just say, well, we're going to hold this lane because they're going to take stuff from you somewhere else. So, uh, you know, I, I I'm really excited to see how that uh, how those numbers go on. Fair, should I move on to the interviews? or? Uh, uh, yes, you... let's. We've, we, we've solved okay. the small crisis that was happening all of two seconds ago, so let us okay. uh, move on to the interviews. Well, we'll just um, right. jump into the interview channel, shall we? Yep. I'll let you take it away, Red, shall I? All right. Well, uh, we have some representatives from the, the different servers. This is uh, uh, We decided that, that going through every single outfit participating takes a little bit too long. So we decided to get uh, individuals from the servers to kind of give us an overview of what the server is and, and just a little bit of history behind it. So I'm going to go to uh, uh, Victor Marks from Cobalt, uh, and I'm going to ask him to, uh, uh, to do his little spiel about uh, Cobalt. Victor, are you there? Mm. Oh, I'm, we haven't given them talk power. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that might be helpful. Now Victor should be able to speak to us. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, thanks. Um, well, uh, our, my little sh uh, the spiel about Cobalt is that uh, we're a fun server. You know, we like to play hard and we like to work hard. We like We have really good outfits on there. And there's been rumors, there's been talk about, you know, oh... Uh, Cobalt's got drama and stuff like that and I honestly think yeah there's sometimes people do some stupid shit but honestly most of the time it's it's sometimes it's in great fun sometimes it's malicious but in the end you shouldn't really take it too uh, too seriously oh uh, sorry I guess uh, I was a little bit too uh, <laughs> it's fine it's fine vigilant yeah um um I'm sadly not taking part tonight because I am back home in the Seychelles and I'm suffering from jet lag and the internet is so bad I, could, I was having, you know, 300 ping normal 
in the te in the that's a normal server smash, server. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, people yeah, in yeah. Room. 300 ping, and um, suddenly it jumps up 20,000 to 30,000, and I can't play. So it's a, I'm a last minute dropout, but they still asked me to come along and uh, talk about Cobalt. Cobalt. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, it's... tell us about Cobalt. What, what's like the culture of Cobalt? What is Cobalt good at? What, what do you typically do? What, ma what makes you you unique? Cobalt is got has got diversity. It has diversity. There's not much um, the situation like other servers where one sort of trend sticks or one sort of like rule sets uh, applies like zerging or, you know, like the zerging on certain servers like, I won't mention names, but you know, there's that sort of culture where people have to form big outfits and they just go and try and steamroll everybody. On Cobalt, you have, you have great people who try and spice it up a bit you know you got your you got your air farmers but you got your infantry players then you got your hardcore infantry players and you got you guys that like to crash the party for fun and yeah it's just great it's it's great it's um it's got character cobalt's got a lot of character i mean it's not it i won't i won't overblow our opinion but yeah okay we're just like we're just we're a happy little server all right. Well, I'm going to move on now into uh, into Sari, so they get a little bit uh, to say here. Uh, uh, Tarok F, uh, go ahead and, and tell us what makes Sari Sari. Sure thing. So, hello there, bystanders and our access soldiers are together. I am Torok, formerly, formerly known as one of the most loyal and dedicated member of the new conglomerate board. I'm here tonight to try and describe about the magic of our world and its many heroes before this interdimensional clash that will take place very soon and that will definitely decide the fate of our identity. Regardless of the outcome, Sirius can count uh, on a vast number of hard-rooted outfits on each faction that never wavers from their path of endless war. Each of them is led by some deeply interesting and well-known individuals, and yet over the past two years and the previous, uh, the previous Mallory merge as we, as we had, we've all come not only to fight, to fight each other, but also know ourselves. Where there was only anger and resentment, over the time uh, originated the spark of respect between outfits and people, and possibly mm, a not-so-straight bromance relationship. <laughs> uh, so we now come to a point where it doesn't really matter how it'll end for us today, because we'll always be together. And even if it all come down eventually to just one server in the future, when there will be maybe just one EU European server and an American one, the bonds we've created we until now will never break. But we will always be made anew by standing together through an each and every challenge so I will throw at us. So bring it on. You might not know us if you haven't played on Ceres a long time, but we know who we are and we know what will be of us at the end of the day. Because on Ceres, regardless of your affiliation, no one won't have to drink a beer by being alone. We will toast we toast now and to, for today as, a, as today is the day of renewal. We rip what we saw into the past months into the, the finest product possible. And we will all share it together. So go, Saras, to the Merge Mesh. All right. Thank you very much, Ceres and Cobalt, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. So I think um, you, Red Lint, have been very diligent and made us a base overview map for Esmir, haven't you? I have. We will go ahead and show that now. And when we come back, uh, we've got some pre-recorded battle motivation speeches from our two corresponding servers. We'll play them after this video. And then we'll have a quick chat about the map before we get started. So we'll be right back. Esimir is one of the original three continents released for Planetside 2, a vast area of snowy wasteland marked by craggy outcroppings of purple crystal. Esimir's sparseness provides many open expanses for vehicle combat, and the flat ground allows aircraft to have a large view of the surrounding terrain. However, many of the bases have been designed with walls to separate vehicle play from the capture points and give the infantry a modicum of protection. Ceres will start from the southern warp gate as the Vanu Sovereignty, and Cobalt will begin at the eastern warp gate as the new conglomerate. Wymere Biolab in the southeast corner of the map is the first of the five starting fights on Esimir. Protected from air and armor bombardment by a shield, Fights to capture Biolabs rely almost exclusively on good infantry play, and they are notoriously difficult to capture even if the defenders are outnumbered. Previous fights here have been a showdown gambling time and numbers. Often, 
The first server to show a large force and start the capture finds a larger enemy force headed their way once they have played their hand and committed to the base. Watterson's Redemption, formerly known as the Octagon, is a popular arena for many players running squad-sized scrimmages. Server smash battles here can be orders of magnitude larger, though. A major choke point in crossroads for the continent, point capture requires well-coordinated infantry tactics. However, the base is very vulnerable to air and armor and leaves little room to hide for unsupported infantry. There's only one tech plant on Esamir, and Isotech plant is well entrenched behind layers of protective bases. Tech plants are the largest single facilities in Planet Site 2, and grant the owner the ability to spawn main battle tanks. Attackers may methodically take down the outlying generators to gain access to the point, or drop infantry from above and try and hold the point with no outside support. Matherson's Triumph, formerly Esamir Munitions Corp., takes two towers and combines them into one base. The surroundings are very unfriendly to Sunder replacement, and while infantry are usually protected inside the cat points, any movement along the outpost's many catwalks leaves them vulnerable to air and armor. With its long capture time and the difficulty in keeping attacking spawn points alive, Triumph is regarded as one of the toughest bases in Planetside to capture. Freyer Amp Station is often referred to as a new style amp station. Arranged differently from the usual single cat point guarded by shields, Freyer has three capture points spread along the inner walls, and capturing a point gives the attackers a dedicated spawn room inside the facility itself. The capture timer also moves very quickly if all three points are out, meaning the defenders have to be on their toes or risk losing the station before they can even show up to contest the base. These are the five major fights that will start this server smash. It will be up to the winner of these first battles to try and capitalize on their position and push the enemy back. Many of these first fights become much more difficult once the base is owned by the enemy, so attacking the bases later in the match is a risky gamble to take. So, Redlin, okay, I have a sneaky suspicion I'm playing the video for a second time. When does it end? Uh, oh, it that's ends. it. It's right there. there Black screen. It's great. Fantastic. There we go, guys. <laughs> Enjoy the video. Ha! <laughs> so, uh, we're back. Uh, that's an awesome overview. It's really nice that you keep doing them. It really kind of gives us a, a kind of a, a good feel for what we can expect, uh, where we see, might see the combat. Um, I guess, what do you think, Maggie? Do you want to... Oh, is she muting herself? Uh, I was going to say, um, what do you think, Red? Do you think you want to maybe play some speeches and then we'll go talk about the map? Or should we save the let's, speeches uh, till the end? Let's do the speeches now and uh, then we'll see where we are. It might at that time be ready for Dots to make his uh, his ref speech. And uh, actually, have we gone over uh, who's going to be doing what here and, and gone over the rules? I tell you what, Dots, sir, why don't you go over some ref rules and then we'll have our speeches, okay? Dots, wake up, please. Pork, pork. All right, he had his chance. Never mind. Okay. So, uh, I think we have a uh, cobalt. Oh, I tell you what, did Ceres make a speech? I don't think they did. All right, fine. Well, we're gonna have to have our cobalt one though. They they definitely did make a speech. So uh, I'm just gonna play that for us now. Salute, Salute. to you, my fellow cobaltians. Here. On this very day, we will make history! Do not fear. Do not despair. We fight for our name! A name that has been threatened. A name that is now in danger of an outrageous invasion. We cannot allow that. We cannot let them think for one second they can win. On this day, we let our needs stand aside for the mission has been entrusted in us. This is a test! A test of our resolution, of our courage and determination. Terry, the goddess of Amphitheon, they are here to challenge us, coming to us and daring to name our fate. We shall farm, crush them, so no one will ever remember their pitiful existence. What do they know? Huh? What do they know? Huh? That they can win? Ha! Let them hope that. Let them sleep with their dreams. But when the skies themselves will shatter above us, we shall stand strong. We shall be an unbreakable barrier, an unreachable summit. Prepare your heart. 
Prepare your souls, because today shall be the first and last day of your lives. We are the crystal where heroes are born. We are the fire which Ceres shall burn for all eternity. We are the focus of a thousand minds. We are the winner of this battle before it starts. The only master of our fates. Not them. Not these peasants. Us. This is Cobalt. <laughs> that was an amazing speech. <laughs> it's not Radlock, but the guy was totally behind it. Well done there to Cobalt. I, I do enjoy that the, that Radlock has now created something that other other servers want to do. I, all the other servers, I'm all for it. Find Hell yeah, to, to psych us up before these. Well, I don't think Ceres gave us one, so they're just going to have to do their own internal monologue. Um, but uh, dots, are you back, sir? Yes, I am. Right. Well, why don't you give us um, a quick referee breakdown or your spiel of the ref? Um, you're quite important, aren't you? Not really. <laughs> Right, so dots on the all call. I'll be our referee this afternoon. So our server reps are Fuzzbucky for Ceres and Passionate for Cobalt. I have the final say in this event. I will also be responsible for timekeeping this event. The objective of today is to capture as much as Ezemir as possible within a two hour time limit. The winner is a server with the most territory at the end of that two hours, as determined by the in-game territory graph, and there is no overtime. There is no immediate gameplay restrictions, play the game as it's meant to be played. Do not delete any characters or mess around with the Jaeger accounts. If you delete a character, you will not be issued a new one. All substitutions have to be made at the Hossing Walk Gate. Make sure you check in with your server rep beforehand. Any cheating, exploits, hacking, or any real life enemy team sabotage will disqualify you, your entire outfit, and may impact your outfit's participation in any future hosted events. And there you go. Awesome. Well, thank you, Darts. At least that's out of the way and cleared up. Um, we are almost starting. We've got about three minutes. Um, I guess we have maybe just enough time, Maggie, to talk about the map. Um, well, I we... did want to cover one other thing. Okay. Uh, Maggie is actually going to be the one who makes the all call to start us off. Uh, that's one of the things. Uh, uh, the, the good thing about having S uh, an SOE uh, person here is she's going to be the one telling us to go ahead and start. So uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, that she's going to be the one telling us to go. Cool. Right, man, we've got a couple of minutes, but three minutes. We've got an another SMU game, another uh, 240 to versus 240. I should see mm -hmm. on the map that Haven's Outpost, Crystal Ridge, Comma Ray, and Freya Northern Barracks, these three territories are out of play, but everything else in the map is live to go. So I'll ask you the same question I've asked you before, Maggie. I've given you 239 people, because you are the Force Commander, to go win. What do you do? Oh man, there's so many decisions that you can that you can make right now. I'm going to be primarily following along with the NC this evening. That speech was fantastic. I think you know they're gonna they're gonna bring their their A game, and I'm pretty excited about that. This is different than than the previous matches that I've I've casted. Uh, before we had bases that were worth different points, and now it's just full on territory. So I mean, getting to that front line, starting those hacks, getting it. You know, I would say that you'd want to get the ones that are going to be able to get you um, multiple links so that you can then move out into uh, more territory, right? Because mm. the goal is to take as much territory. And then you're going to want to keep your guys on the forward front uh, so that you're continually suppressing the enemy and keeping them closer to the warp gate. That way you can keep, uh, you know, going around them and taking the territory. But this is going to be this is going to be a massive fight. This is not this is going to be quite different. Um, something that we had talked about too in the past, Farah, is that some of these bases are not going to be as smart to take, primarily because you have you have bases that are going to be harder to attack and harder to defend. Yes. So you're going to want to take the ones that you're going to be able to grab quickly, 
and hold for long periods of time. Sure. And those are going to be the most valuable bases for you. An example would be perhaps um, Ymir Biolab um, was originally high value because as a Biolab you can grind in there for days and on a point system it was worth quite a lot. It was worth five small territories but now since everything's equal Ymir Biolab is a good kind of choke point and a tactical and a breaker but at the end of the day it constantly needs to have manpower, it constantly needs to be defended because unlike small outposts that take four minutes the Biolab is less than three minutes and has an SU generator that you can kill off and prevent spawns. So it always... It's kind of clingy. It's saying, stay with me. I need you. Please defend me. Whereas other bases... And are that extra health regen. That extra oh, health well, regen is really nice. There you go. And, and this is the other thing about large facilities. Like The ISO tech plant I see is important because main battle tanks are going to play a big deal, I reckon, in this map. Or they, they, they give you that big edge. And, and we know that Waterson's Redemption, formerly known as the Octagon, um, will have a big play because it allows access into additional territories on the southern warp gate, which is uh, Ceres, and uh, heading towards east on the eastern lane between Sarah Listening Post and Turn Bale 4 uh, against uh, the Cobalt. All right, right. So Maggie, that is, uh, would you, uh, uh, Maggie, would you mind getting on all call and giving a one minute countdown? Tell them that it's one minute and that they will go when the alert starts. All right. I'll call. I'll call one minute. When the alert starts, that is when you will go. Prepare for battle. All right, 60 seconds out now. Okay, so I will uh, go down south in about 30 seconds and watch the Ceres pool, see where they go. Uh, do you reckon we'll see two death balls of, of air forces meeting as, as we usually do? In previous oh, games, yeah. they've actually avoided each other, surprisingly. One went north and one went south. I'm, I'm kind of hoping they just go straight at each other in the tech plan. I don't know if they'll exactly go for each other, but they're definitely going to go for air. Air is going to be the best way for you to get to the bases that you need to go to as quickly as possible. I certainly see a ton of scythe sitting here at the VS Warping, so I don't know if they're all going to bail out of those or if they're going to try and fight with them when they get to where they're going. Yes, I can uh, say from the NC perspective, there's something equivalent coming their way. <laughs> Well, I'm going to head south and we'll have a look. Well, I reckon we're actually rolling on near enough a five minute delay, just uh, so we're all clear here. Uh, wow. I, I can safely say that's a lot of scythes. That is a lot of scythes. Um, this this is going to be good. Uh, I don't think I can recall ever seeing... Um, can you think of any other game where you would have this many air forces going against each other? I think this is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, it's like the flying circus of World War One. You know, you have all the planes flying in above and everyone's kind of like minding their own fight. And even though you've got like a hundred wingmen, as soon as you're in that dogfight with that one other guy, there's nothing else going on in the skies. Yeah, this is going to be chaos. There are so many reavers and galaxies. I'm curious as to where they're going to send all of, the, all, of, all of their troops. I would reckon Warson's redemption is going to be important. Um, Matheson's Triumph, which is formerly Esper Munitions Corporation, uh, that's going to be important because they want to get to ISA mining operation to get to ISA tech plant. So that's an important link because it's a three-point base uh, and you don't want the blue, the NC, kind of interfering with it. Uh, there will be some free tech, take, um, kind of base captures, basically outlining the bases, um, but direct contention will be between Matheson's Triumph and Ryman Analytics and definitely at Watterson's Redemption. And Watterson's Redemption is a base where air power is all important. Um, Waiting for this alert to kick off. <laughs> da da da. You know, waiting for the alert. 